Hey everybody, Troy from the do-it-yourself world and the off-grid project. I'm back to the power station here. This is our off-grid tiny house solar power station. We have 12 volts DC, we have 5 volts USB outlets, another 12 volts and some outlets, always using these. Internet uh, modem plugged in permanently, been off the grid for well a long 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 time since I built this. Uh, my office and uh, the back part of the house is here. Anything we need on the front goes in here. Pretty much been using solar power for the most part all season um, since we uh, did the expansion and built this. Now, you guys may remember I was planning on installing a 24 volt cigarette lighter outlet on the other side of my box. I never finished closing this up and I was going to finish that promptly but living with two other people in the house the cigarette lighter a socket that I had is nowhere to be found and after months of searching I finally decided to buy a new one here it is so now I have a socket that I'm going to install on here so that I can plug in the 12 or 24 volt digital voltmeter into my outlet because this is only showing the output voltage 12.2 volts of my uh, 24 to 12 volt power converter so although it's I've been had it on for months now and I see it's very stable 12.2 12.3 volts and it's nice to have a thermometer but that'll work on 24 just as well and then I'll have real-time voltage output here on the 24 volt line when I hook this up and then I've got my big hundred foot network cable in here and the next project is going to be to run that to my TriStar MPPT uh, solar charge controller and then over into my uh, modem so that I can then access the stats on my laptop at any given time 24 7 and share them with you so that's the project we're going to do right now Okay, now I've turned this around and I'm thinking about putting the power converter here and then the 12 volt or 24 volt outlet right next to that. Something like that. And then I, this has really, really short wires, so my hopes are that I don't have to do any chopping or anything that I can use the original 24 volt wires coming into here and tie this in. It's going to be short but it is what it is and then I'll put a little piece of conduit over all that later on one day. Zip tie it and uh, close it up. Although that is when this is turned back into where it belongs this whole shelf t fits tightly against the wall and the wires are very stiff and prevent you from moving this around at all so there's no real danger of getting into that at all uh, Michelle never she can't get into the back of that this has a, a plant on top so it's a very very stable shelving unit and uh, can't be manu maneuvered or moved easily at all it took me five minutes to get it turned this way so I can work on it what I do need to do is go out and get my screws because I'm going to have to put two screws in here and then uh, this has some screws so I'll get my power driver as well and we'll open this up and see what it looks like inside okay now we're going to tie in these wires to the 24 volt lines coming into the power converter so I've got to snip off the original leads I don't know yeah I guess that was designed for a car. They just gave you whatever they thought was best at the time. I don't think I've ever used the original leads on these before. And then strip them. Looks like 12 gauge. Strip them long enough to fit those rubbery grips on the tool like that long enough to fit in the twist caps 
Now once I get everything done and uh, tested well, I might go ahead and solder these later anyway, but I want to get them with the wire screws for today and get them going. There's my wires ready to go. Now getting this connected is quick and easy here. My only problem is the stiffness of all these wires behind here. There's positive and negative. I have to bring these through. 24 volt plot plus and minus here. So the first thing I want to do is take one of these. There's nothing uh, really connected much there, so I guess it won't matter. What do we got going on? Charging cell phones. Laptop isn't plugged in yet. Okay, now put this. Wee. Oh, that's surprising. What is going on? Maybe I'll just unplug all these. Everything. That's scary. That was a lot of uh, snapping power. Must be some serious capacitors in that. Anyway, I didn't think there was that much power, but I guess a cell phone draws some power. Yeah, that's that's really arcing. That's sort of scary. <clears throat> That's just the unit now. There's nothing else connected. All right, I'm trying to do this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna twist this. Is I'm not getting my hand in here, I'm trying to not block the camera, and it's not working for me. So I'm gonna get right in here and do this. I'll be right back. Okay, I've got one on. I just couldn't get my hands in there without blocking the camera. So um, there's a lot of power goes through that. I'm surprised. That was really snapping and popping and crackling. So what I'm going to do here first, and what I did on here, I put a piece of tape on. I'm going to put another piece of tape on to stop stress on those wires. Take off any strain on those wires. What I had to do is put a piece of tape on, because these wires are unruly and really give me trouble. So put that on there. And that takes strain off that junction. I'm going to do the same thing here. so that I can more easily work on this once I take this cap off. That made it easier by far. Having no more strain. They kept trying to go two different directions on me and it just wasn't happening. Okay. So now I can take this one and pop that up in here along with these and hopefully with, without any sparking and snapping and popping. It wasn't pretty. Okay. And get that back on there and then another piece of tape to hold that all together take the strain off the wires keep everything in place neatly okay there's that now I've got to check and see if this has power there's no lighter indicator on that. Oh wow, the cover came off. All right, whatever. This should show me I have 24 volts. Um, there we go. There's our power indicator. Can you see that? Um, oh, where are we? Get that camera in there. Can you see that? 30.8 volts. So it's working. We have uh, now a monitor. We can now see the the voltage in here at any given time on the battery bank which is good now I'm going to take that out and we know it works and then I'm going to mount this stuff on here on the side of my box and then I can close my box and put all the wires back away neatly and uh, put this stand back where it goes so this goes first mount it right here That roughly centered right here. Let me get this one in first. Get the other one in. Make it look nice. 
somewhat straight. I really don't want to torque it down, just hold it in place. There's no re reason to put any strain or stress on that and torque it down hard. No need at all for that. And then this one I want to put right here. Bend these wires right here. Okay. Somewhat centered. It looks right like that. That one came with screws. Already is looking better. I'm very pleased that I now have a voltmeter on here in the house. It's been bugging me not knowing the voltage without running out, uncovering the uh, TriStar and checking the status of the batteries at any given time I want to look. Right about there. Good. I don't want to torque it down. Now these wires, I'm going to fold around and under, and uh, then I'm going to have to um, get a little piece of conduit or something for that. I don't have anything at this time, but I want to fold these around and under. This is going to be awkward. They're very, very stiff. Easier said than done. Like I said, the wire out in, oh, in behind. Wow, that's really got a lot of force on it. The uh, AC wires coming from the inverter are really, 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 really stiff. So I might just put some kind of a cover on here somehow. And cover all that mess. Tie these together and run them out. Just figure I might have to come up with a little cover for this, build a little wooden uh, U-shaped thing that goes over that. Might be easier. Because otherwise, right now, it's just giving me trouble. It's really fighting me. Well, anyway, now, let's turn it around a little bit and pop this in here. This is now working. And I should now have permanent, um, instantaneous battery status right there. And that right there is really, really good to have. And now again, I know somebody's going to say this, it's not precise because you've got loss in the lines. But once I get familiar with the reading on this little meter, and as compared to the reading on the batteries themselves, I'm going to have a much better overview here in the house 24-7 at any given time and see the voltage at a glance. And that was my my goal right now so that's uh, really nice I, I'm feeling good about that that's my new off-grid TV guys right there well there it is guys part one of my project for the day finished we got our off-grid solar powered system in place back in position where it belongs, fully functional, with a instantaneous readout, 24-7 readout, of the status of the batteries at any given time. That is very, very important. My new off-grid TV. Very important. So now, I don't ever have to stress about running out, checking things, run back in, back and forth. It's all right there. Well guys, thanks for watching. Please do like, subscribe, and share. And if you want notifications of when I upload videos, hit the bell icon, which most people don't know about. You have to subscribe and click the bell in order to see when I upload videos. Uh, 
follow our daily videos as we strive to become fully self-sufficient and off the grid on a budget. And uh, this is one step in our off-grid independence.